Hello everyone. This video we talk about a we question with the binary dependent variables. So first we'll take a look of the linear probability model. Second we'll take a look of the two nonlinear model for the binary dependent variable cases. They are called poor bit regression and logit regressions. Finally we will take a look of the maximum likelihood estimation, which is used to estimate the beta of the in the poor bit and logit model. So like I started, first is the linear probability model. So in the past, we have a chapter to talk about how to regret a regression model with the binary independent variables. So the x can be the dummy variables equal to zero or one. In this case, we, we are what we are doing is that for the dependent variable y, they may just result in two numbers. So maybe the number of so the students the decision whether he should drop out of the school or continue studying or the whether the person can successfully apply for the mortgage borrowing so there are two, only two options one and zero we, we can quantify by one and zero so this is this model is very useful because in this case we can quantify the qualitative variables so again, I will use the classical classical examples in the United States. So this is the one of the example in the United States, the chance or the probability of getting the mortgage payment. So the denying rate, so one means that the bank denying your application, while zero means the bank accept your applications. Here is a function of P derived by I ratio. P derived by I ratio is the payment to income ratio. That means how much how how is the percentage of your monthly payment of your loans. So if higher the payment that means that this is more risky. So it is reasonable that higher the P over I ratio, the denying rates will be higher. So in the past if we do the linear regressions so we will get that okay the d9 will be something like positive value with respect to the pi ratio so this is somehow reasonable and it seems that it's okay right because higher pi ratio higher d9 rate and we can again we can also use the multiple regression model so we can ask some other variables so if the borrower are the black man or white man they may constitute different probabilities. Okay, but what is the shortcoming of this model? So let's maybe let's take a look of the first model. So what is the shortcoming of these equations? So here the denied head is the probability of the application being denied or accept. So what if the PI ratio is less than 13%? Okay, so you can plug in your calculator, set this less than 0 0.13, what you will get is a negative value of the probability. So what is the meaning of negative probability? In probability theory, usually we assume that the probability should at the range of 0 and 1. So a good model of this probability model should, the dependent variable should lies between 0 and 1. That's why we need to use some methods to solve this problem. Here comes to the second topic, the probability regressions and the logic regressions. These two are used to solve these problems. So what is probability regressions? Okay, so the probability so the probability regression is in this form. The probability that y equal to one. So in our example is the line given the value of x is this form so this is the probability functions and the function is a function of beta 0 plus beta 1 x this is our linear regression model so we put the result into this V so this V is the cumulative density functions or cumulative distribu distribution functions so this is some probability concept which is in this form okay so in probability, if the number is continuous, you can find out the 
probability that is less than that value. So what probit model is do doing is that okay, you calculate the value of beta zero and beta one x and put it into the CDF, then calculate the probability of this region to see what is the so this probability is at the area one zero to one. Okay, so this solves the problem of negative probability or the probability greater than one. So let's take a look at the examples. So if beta zero is negative two and beta one is three, while the PI ratio is zero point four. Okay, so how can we put these number into the probit regressions? So the probit reg regression is that probability y equal to one, the denial rate equal to one given x is the phi negative two plus three times the PI ratio. Now the PI ratio is zero point four. Okay. So this is equal to the phi of negative zero point eight. So what is the probability of value of negative zero point eight? You can take a look. So you can Google the cumulative standard normal distribution functions. Okay, so zero point negative zero point eight. So this is negative zero point eight. The prob the value is zero point two one one nine. That means the probability, the result would be equal to 21.19%. Okay, so this value lies between 0 and 1. So this shows that if beta 0 is 2 and beta 1 is 3, if the payment to income ratio is 0 0.4, the pr pr probability of getting the DIN line for the application is 21.19%. Okay, then take a look at the example in the multiple regressions multiple variables. So if beta 0 is 0 0.1.6, while beta 1 is 2, beta 2 is 0 0.5, and x1 variable is 0 0.4, x2 is 1. So what is the probability that y equal to 1 given x? So this is equal to the phi as a function of beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2. Okay. So this is the phi of negative 3. Again, look at the table. Then you will find out that the phi of negative 0.3 is 38.21%. OK, so this is the way to calculate the probability using the probit model. So next, what is the actually, what is the meaning of this beta 1 and beta 2? So in the, in the past, in the multiple regression or linear regressions, this is the marginal effect of changing the value of x with respect to y. But what is the meaning of beta 1 in the probability model? So let's take a look at the meaning. Okay. Well, in probability model, So if you draw the line of the probit regression into the data points, you will get something like this. Well, contrast to the linear regression model in the past, a straight line. So here is depict some non-linear terms. So still remember, still remember in our non-linear regressions, if you want to calculate the change in the value with respect to change in the value of x. You need to calculate the value of y at the new x minus the value of y at the old x. So in this probit regressions, so the trick is still the same. You need to calculate the value of y with new x. Okay, given with the new x. Okay, so you need to calculate the phi with respect to the new x. Then compare with the value of the OX. Okay, then you minus using the new equation minus the old equation, then you will get the 
effect of the value changing the value of x so you cannot so actually the beta one here has no strict meaning or no definite meanings as you can see the effect of changing value of x depends on the initial value okay so in the starting points maybe the effect of changing x is very small while in the middle the change in the value of x will be very great finally again the effect will become smaller and smaller okay so this is the probit regressions next is the logit regressions so the concept of logit equation regression is more or less the same with the probit regressions so we are going to calculate the probability given some functional form I get the probability that y equal to 1 given some x value will be taken in this form a function of the beta 0 plus beta 1 xi plus up to beta k xk if this multiple regressions so you put the results into the f function what is the f function? f function take this form 1 derived by 1 plus e raised to the power negative then your regression equations so let's take a look of examples again I want to count compute the probability of getting the denying given some PI ratio and whether the whether the applicant are black or white and the functional is in this form negative 0 0.1 4.13 plus 5.37 PI ratio plus 1.27 black okay so if the guy having a PI ratio equal to 0 0.3 while he is white so what is the probability of him to getting the denied so this is equal to so you just need to insert the value into the functions now this is 0 0.13 the intercept plus 5.37 times 0 0.3 PI ratio plus 1.27 since it's white so we put the dummy variable to be 0 okay then you will find that the value is 1.e raised to the power 2.52 then using your calculator you will find that okay this is 7.4 7 percent so given this functional form and this information you can find out that okay the probability of getting denied is 7.4 percent so this is how the logic regression model works